one of the ways to make a unique hand spun yarn is to dye some fibres. And there are lots of techniques you can use, but in this video we're going to look at doing a hand painted white top that I want to turn into sock yarn. My name's Becca, I'm a spinner, knitter and would-be weaver and you're very welcome to my home in West Wales. Okay, I have to tell you, I've actually never done this before. I've done quite a lot of acid dyeing. I've used a uh, big sort of kettle dyeing, rainbow dyeing, which was always really good fun. I liked all the different combinations you can get. I've over dyed lots of things, but actually hand painting it, I've never done it. And I've been dyeing wool for a really long time. So it's quite a surprise. Anyway, in this video, we are definitely going to do some experimenting and rather than using the big gastronome trays that you see a lot of indie dyers using, we're going to use very small, just a kind of steamer that I'm going to rig up in one of my dye pots. My idea is that it's going to be a sock yarn. So I'm sort of on a bit of a, uh, a sock knitting fest at the moment, so it, that really appealed to me. I hope you enjoy this video and it is very much an experiment, so it could all go horribly wrong. But if it goes horribly wrong, I'm going to share that too, because we only learn by our mistakes. So I'm going to turn the camera around and let the experiment begin. For this project, we need some undyed top, a bowl, a little bit of washing up liquid, and we're going to soak that in some water. We need our dye powder and I'm using Ashford wool dyes and you can see they're fairly well used. Some cling film. In the States I think you call this saran wrap. Very importantly, rubber gloves. Various measuring devices. Some white vinegar. Hot water for, for dissolving the powder, cold water, jars to make up our dye, something that can act as a steamer, and I've sort of rigged something together in one of my dye pots that I only ever use for dyeing because you really don't want to be using anything that you use in the kitchen for dyeing. Even though these are non-toxic, you still want, don't want to be doing it. That's going to be my steamer. And then this is my colour inspiration. The first thing we're going to do is put our combed, undyed top into warm water with just a spot of washing up liquid detergent in it which is going to help to wet the fibres and we want this to soak for about half an hour so we're just going to let that soak and by the time we've done all the other prep this should be ready for the dyeing process. The next stage we're going to make up our dye and Ashford dyes come in 10 millilitre containers and this is enough for a kilo of fibre or yarn. I'm not making up enough for a kilo, I'm going to do a quarter of that amount. So that is going to be 2.5 grams for me and this is that's half a teaspoon so I'm going to put half a teaspoon in and this stuff gets everywhere. Put your rubber gloves on. Make sure you're protecting your surfaces. And now I'm going to just do one to show you how it works. So we're just going to add a little bit of hot water just to dissolve the dye. And put a lid on and give it a swoosh round. The next stage is to add our vinegar, which is mordant. And for that amount of dye, I'm going to need 30 millilitres 
of Cougar and this is why I've got these because that's there you go, 20 millilitres. It makes it much easier to measure out smaller amounts. So I'm going to measure out 30 millilitres and add it to my dissolved dye powder. I'm now going to top up with cold water and I'm going to need approximately 200 millilitres and then in there I should have 250 millilitres of dye which is ready to either be diluted or to have other colours added to it to make some different colours. Now I'm going to go ahead and make up the rest of these dyes and go from this lovely Japanese tin is my colour inspiration and I'm going to use these as ideas for sort of the colours I'm going to go for. I'm going to have quite a lot of white in this design and then three different greens and I think I'm actually going to go for two pinks. There's only one pink in this design but I'm going to go for two pinks, one quite strong and then one much more pastel -y. So I'm going to get on with mixing the colours from my base colours that I made up earlier and I've got blue, yellow and then a really really dark pink. So blue and yellow together make green and I'm going to mix those colours to try and get three different greens. So I've got all my jars of dye made up and now I'm going to go and set up the surface where I'm actually going to do the dyeing. I'm working outside and I've got my outside table, an old towel and then two layers of cling film which I've got weighted down because it is quite a windy place West Wales and no exception today. So I'm going to now lay out my top that has been soaking in water and start having fun with colour. So the first one I'm going to start with is my very strong pink and because of the effect I want to go for, it's just going to be a spot on. I'm going to work my way around the colours so I shall speed this bit up otherwise this video is going to be really. So there's the finished result and you see there is not that much colour in there so I'm hoping that I'm going to get predominantly white with flashes of colour. I don't know how much colour difference I'm going to get with those greens. I probably should have less conservative. Anyway, next stage, roll it up and put it in the steamer. So we have steam and I'm going to let that steam for about 20 minutes. So here is the moment of truth. This has steamed for 20 minutes and has been cooling for a couple of hours. So fingers crossed, the dye has all taken. And it's going to have the desired effect. Well, so far so good. as many layers as of cling film as I put on this but no. Aha. okay 
Okay, this is looking hopeful. So this has been drying overnight and as you can see it's quite pink. When it first came out of the um, dye bath, well it wasn't in the dye bath, out of the cling film, I sort of was not in love with it but actually I'm, I'm quite liking this. It's not quite as white as I thought it was going to be when my head and it's predominantly pink rather than predominantly green, which is not really what I'd planned. However, I'm still pleased. Not a fail. Definitely going to try this again. This was super fun. Now, the next thing is how I'm going to spin it up. And that is for the next video, where I'm going to talk about creating a consistent yarn that you need for knitting something like socks. Until then, happy creating. <laughs>